is what we are going to classify or call a spiritual dichotomy. A spiritual dichotomy. And so what we have here, separation between one end of the spectrum and the other end of the spectrum. In other words, the two ways of man and two classifications, they're not, they don't go together, they're not synonymous, you're either one or the other, there's no in between, you're either saved or you're not, there's no maybe, uh, there's no possibility, when you are saved or if you're not saved, it's either one or the other. There's no in between. Just like you have heaven and hell. There's no purgatory. There's no in between. For so long, people have tried to cushion the blow. People have tried to cushion the blow of life by living in sin, but trying to justify themselves as being a Christian. And you have people who, when someone dies, when someone dies, everybody wants to be put in heaven. But it doesn't work that way. It's a harsh reality. It is a reality indeed. But it is a very harsh reality. Now I'm going to read these six verses to you. And then you'll begin to see how it talks about one end of the spectrum and then how it goes to the other end of the spectrum. And so therefore you have a spiritual or two-part dichotomy, okay? Blessed is the man, verse one, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. And verse 3, the last part of the first part of the law of that God. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. And I thank God that Christianity has a maturation process, a growth process, a time process. The Bible says to everything, there is a season, there is a time, a season, or whatnot. To everything, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall what? Prosper. Now I'm going to read verse 3 to everyone listening to me, whether you hear or whether you're listening to me online. Whatever you're doing, I want you to stop what you're doing. And I want you to really listen to this. And I want you to pay attention. Because tonight, we want to look at ourselves and we want to be able to say, okay, which end of this dichotomy? How does God, how, how am I classified in heaven? Am I what I say I am? Verse 3 will sum up the life of a believer. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Of water. Now, God gave me this while I was looking on this, this afternoon. And I'm going to take verse three real quick and I want to make sure I share that tonight because I'm not so sure that I'm going to get to what all of this, but God gave me something in verse three that I really want to share with you. And if you don't get anything else out of this lesson tonight, the sinner or the ungodly and the Christian child of God. Blessed is the man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. The 
child of God, verse 3, should sum up the child of God. So I want to share with you what God gave me. Number one, the first part of uh, chapter 1, verse 3, a child of God should have power and strength. Power and strength. And he shall be like a tree. Have you ever seen a tree that's been there a while, that's planted by water, that get all the nutrients and nutrition that it needs? Have you ever just tried to run up to it and push it down? That happened to me when I was in elementary school. We used to run out to recess and uh, <laughs> my wife laughed every time. And so we used to seventh grade, I think it was the seventh grade at that news it wasn't seventh grade. Man, man. Whatever it was. Yeah, seventh grade. Anyway, we run out there, they let us run around out there. And we run out there, there was a cemented part. And then there was a part down the hill by the creek that they would let us go and play. And then you had Bankhead Highway out there, but we were safe from that. And one of the things we would do, there was, there was a tree that was planted by the creek that kind of leaned out. And one of the things that we used to like to do was take a running start, and when we would get to the tree, the tree jump up in the tree. Well, at that particular time, I missed the tree and hit it. And it got my attention. A Christian should not be moved. We say, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. You should not be easily uprooted. You should not easily be disrupt, dis disrupted. Number one, so the first thing that a person, this is how you really know that, this is how you really know that you're blessed, that you don't sit in the seat of the skull, that you don't stand in the way of the sinners, you don't, all of those things that are in verse one, verse three is a verification of that. All right? And I have uh, a breakdown for each one of those, but I want to make sure I really get this out because it's a blessing. Verse 3, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. The waters of God provide everything we need. What did the Bible say? Out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers. A Holy Ghost filled Christian should not, should be strong should be strong, should not easily be deceived, should not be easily uprooted, all right? So the first part is power and strength. The second part is, and, and bring forth his fruit in his season, productivity. God gave me this this afternoon. You should have power and strength. Power. The next thing you should be, you should be the kind, a man or a woman who really has God should be producing. You should be producing. Your life, you should be producing spiritually. You should be producing soul winning. You should be producing. You, there should be results. Where's the results? As a result of being a Christian, what do you have to show for as a result of being saved, of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, being faithful to God over the years? What do you have to show for? What have you produced? He said, you shall be like a tree planted by the river of the water, bringing forth his fruit. What is fruit? Produce. Results. Right. And then the third part of, of this verification that we're, we're not going to get 
get to the center part tonight. I promise you that. Because we're going to verify tonight whether or not we are what we're supposed to be as people of God. Right? We're we going to get verification tonight. So the first part of verse 3 is power and strength. The second part is productivity. The third part is leave also shall not wither. His leaves shall peak performance. Peak performance. In other words, serving God, living for God, without letting the pressures of life, the storms of life. When you see a tree, after it's rained, after it's stormed, the leaves are still green, it's still there. It may lose two or three here and there. But a man or a woman who's been through the storm, a man or a woman who has dealt with criticism, a man or a woman who has dealt with folks in the church, outside the church, financial problems, mental, emotional, peak performance. Not allowing your leaves. Do you not know you can look at the leaves on the tree and tell whether or not it's sick or not? People can look at your life for God and tell whether or not you're spiritually sick or not. Or you are what you say you are. The Bible said, Let your light so shine. Isn't that what the fifth chapter of Matthew says? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? And when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, when we're not living the way we're supposed to be living, so you have people that don't want to obey the Bible. They argue with you at every turn. And then when your life, when things don't go well, then you can't perform at peak time. Huh? You can't perform for God I'm depressed. You can't, every so what happens, you wither up, you get sick, problems overtake you, you'll leave. But when a man walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, no standing in the way of the sinners, no sitting in the seat of the school, you can perform, you can do what God wants you to do, it doesn't matter because you've been through it, you've dealt with it, you, you, you've overcome. You are a peak performer. Anybody can serve God with a pocket full of money. Anybody can serve God with rent pay. Anybody can serve God with a good paying job or when everything's going your way. But what about when everything's not going your way? When the storms and the pressures of life have mounted up, what about when you're dealing with a sickness or a disease or an illness or a loved one or, or people around you? What about death? Can you still serve God? Or do you wither up and say, I can't do this. It's too hard. It's difficult. So number one, you have power. Number two, you are productive. Number three, you are peak performer. And number four, prosperity. He said, whatsoever ye do shall what? Prosper. Like the book, like this chapter says. And all you got to do 
is you look at the look at verse three, and then they'll refer you back to verse one. Because the blessings of God come from you obeying him. That's the whole gist of this whole chapter. Disobedience and obedience. A sinner disobeys God and a Christian obeys God. Blessed is the man that what? That's obedient. Standeth in the way that, that does what? That walketh not in the counsel of what? The ungodly. If you know people are not saved, why are you hanging around? Why do you uh, get counsel from? Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scum. Now what do all these things mean? Being a real child of God comes from obeying God. And when you obey God, number three becomes a reality. Verse three becomes a reality. The four Bs become a reality in your life. Power, power, peak performance is number three. Number two, productivity and, and prosperity. All right? Now, how does all this come about? Now, next week, I'm going to deal with well, it'll be Saturday after, well, it'll be, it'll be after Christmas, so we don't have a house today. Christmas will be over with. But anyway, uh, and it is Jesus' birthday, so we can't not have everything. All right? Um, so what is walk, a, a, a walking not in the council of the ungodly? What is that? Walking not in the council of the ungodly. The word walk means to dwell in, to reside in, you know, pretty simple. Not allowing yourself to get counsel or advice from people who are not saved. Why would a Christian, why would a person that is saying, get spiritual advice from people who are not saved. Why would you do that? Your well-meaning friends, your family members, whoever, people on the job, friends, good friends of yours, whoever they may be, if they're not saved, they don't know what they're talking about. They may know money, they may know business, they may know cars, they may know engineering, but if they're not saved, they don't know God. So how are they going to tell you? Walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor number two, nor standeth in the way of the sinner to abide or dwell in the way or a road that's well tried. Course of life or mode of action. Nor standing in the way of sinners to abide in a well tried road. A sinner that has walked the path that they walked over and over. That's what that means, over and over and over. A well-trying course of life, way of a well-trying road. Why would you stand in that? Why would you situate yourself in a place, in a well-trying course of life that you know it doesn't work, it's not going to end well, it's not going to help you get to heaven? Why would you do that? Standing in the way of the what? Sinner. You know what that word sinner means in there? A criminal. An offender. A person that's simply guilty of wrongdoing. You know what this is really talking about? A, what you call a person that's been in crime all their life? A career criminal. A career criminal. That's it. Career sin. That's really what that's talking about. When you look up that word stand, 
here, it means to walk a well-trodden uh, course of action road. To build, to, to, to situate yourself around people that are career criminals or career sinners. They're not going to get saved. They don't want to get saved. They're always trying to figure out a way to do something wrong and to get this and to get that. Get away from that. That's not going to help. And then last but not least, sitting in the seat of the scorn. Verse 1. Now all this is in verse 1. Nor sitting in the seat of the scorn. Now that word sitting is very similar to stand and walk. But the word scornful means not allowing yourself to be ambushed. Sit in the seat of the scorn. People that are mocking God and making fun of God will ambush you. That's what that word sit means to allow yourself to get ambushed by people mocking and laughing and making fun of God. You don't need to be, a, we don't need to be around that. I don't like to be around people joking about God, making fun of God, making fun of church, laughing at the things of God, and all these things. All of these things, if you will obey God, they will help you by not Walking in the counsel of the ungodly or standing in the way of the sinner of sitting. By not doing all these things, they will help you focus on what you are supposed to be doing. They will help you not be distracted so that God can bless your life. So that you can uh, be a peak performer. So that you can be productive as a child of God. So that you can have the power and the strength that you need. And last but not least in verse 3. That you can have prosperity in your life. Psalm 1, a spiritual dichotomy. This week, I'm sharing with you about the things in reference to a child of God. Next week. We're going to look at the other end of the spectrum, the ungodly. Now we see what we should be. Next week, we're going to look at what we should not be. Okay? God bless you as our sincere prayer. We thank you for joining us. Remember service in the morning at 11 o'clock.